The Elegoo Centauri Carbon shook up the industry with its crazy price point and high printing temperatures. But after I've lived with it for a little bit, what do I think? That's right, today we're looking at the Elegoo Centauri Carbon one more time. I've had some time to print with it now and my thoughts have changed in some areas and haven't changed in other areas. So I thought I would take the time today to give you four things I like and four things I don't like about the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Well, let's dive right in. Okay, the first thing we need to call out about this printer is its feature set. This is the obvious one. Now there's a lot to run through here, so I'll go kinda quickly. This printer prints hot, like hot enough that you can print just about any consumer material that you would want to. Everything from PA6 nylon to PPSCF, you got it. It's great. So the super hot printing range, yep, that's super. But there's also the supporting features that go along with that that the machine has stock. These are also great. Things like the enclosure. This machine's fully enclosed, so you can print the warp prone materials by heating up the inside of the chamber, and that's helpful as well, but it's also enclosed with materials like metal and a glass door and not plastic and stuff. I've got nothing against plastic. We do a lot with plastic. But an all metal frame is super nice. And speaking about supporting these high temperatures this machine can print at, let's talk about the nozzle really quick. This printer uses an all metal hot end and it's reinforced with hardened components. So that means if you're printing with abrasive materials, anything from glow in the dark PLA to carbon fiber nylon, you're not gonna wear out the printer. So yeah, high printing temps are great, but the package that supports those high printing temps, that's really what makes a difference. And this machine has packaged those items very well. Now it's fair to mention that this isn't the only machine on the market that can print this hot. In fact, there's a lot of machines that can print hotter. And it's not the only machine that comes with hardened internals to print super abrasive materials. And of course, there's a lot of fully enclosed machines out there as well. This isn't the only one. But when we're talking about this price point, what other machine can do all those things at that price point? And that brings me, of course, to number two on the list of the things that I like about this printer, the price. This thing's only $300. And for $300, they're checking an awful lot of boxes for a consumer machine. So we've got a fully enclosed printer with a 250 cubed-ish build volume, an all metal frame, and it can print just about anything. The closest offering that Bamboo or Anycubic have that can boast those same specs is like double the price. And some of those can't even print the abrasive materials. Meanwhile, here comes Elegoo with an absurdly cheap machine that can hang with the big boys. And as somebody that's logged hundreds of hours on this machine recently, I can say with certainty now, it can hang. It can exist in a similar space. It can walk down the street and knock on the neighbor's door and ask if those other machines can come out to play today. Now, this printer's not gonna be dethroning any of those machines with its reliability or anything like that necessarily, but it can put up an excellent fight. And that alone's pretty impressive to me. And as we're talking about things that I do like about this machine, it's all through the lens of price. The price really needs to be considered. Like if this machine's giving me issues and it costs twice as much, it'd be a very frustrating experience. But if I have a small, non-deal breaking issue occurring on a printer that only costs $300, it's a little bit easier to forgive some of those hiccups. Moving right along here, the third thing that I enjoy about this printer is the fact that it came with a two-sided plate. Now I hear you saying, Keo, don't most printers come with a two-sided plate? Yes, but this one has a smooth side and a rough side. That's the cool part. That's the part that I like. I like that. Since this printer can print crazy hot and abrasive hardcore filaments, it only makes sense to ship the machine with a build plate that's suitable for those filaments. And I feel like no other manufacturer's really gotten this hint the same way. So let's look back to when the Bamboo X1 Carbon first came out. It shipped with this smooth engineering plate. In a lot of cases, that actually had the opposite issue. By and large, people are trying to print PLA, but when you have the plate that's for the engineering filament, PLA doesn't stick all that well. And since that engineering plate was geared towards the materials that would rip a standard PEI rough plate to shreds, Bamboo sent that machine with a smooth plate so that the end user could print with composites straight off the bat. Now in the case of most machines today, and even the X1 Carbon today, printers ship with a powder-coated PEI build plate, one that's friendly for PLA and PETG for the average consumer. Then if you want to print the strong stuff from there, you gotta get a different plate. But the Centauri Carbon, of course, has fixed this issue in the most simple way. You like that? I sure do. So when somebody says that this printer ships with everything that you need to print simple PLA or crazy abrasives, they're telling the truth. 
even down to the build plate. It really does seem like Elegoo put some thought into the end user that would use both PLA and more demanding filaments. A printer that can do both. And finally, something that I would not have guessed would rank so highly on my list these days, this printer's kind of open. As in, it's not fully locked down like an Anycubic or a Bamboo printer. Now, as a Bamboo fanboy, this is not something that I would particularly have interest in, especially a couple of years ago. Actually, it's not really something I care about all that much right now. I like my closed Bamboo ecosystem because, in my opinion, it's been done right. Maybe not right, it's been done well? It's been done better than most. Boy, that's gonna get some comments. But what I mean is, things work how they're supposed to work. I haven't come across something that I wanna tweak or change. If a printer's open source, it allows you to do those things, but for me, I just wanna print. And the Bamboo ecosystem, walls and restrictions and everything, allows me to do just that reliably. Until they stop playing ball with Orca Slicer and third-party upgrades and stuff, this topic's been beat to death, but I'm using it to illustrate my point. I don't like having six different versions of Orca Slicer on my computer. Creality Slicer, it's Orca based, and it's so much slower. Anycubic Slicer Next and Orca Flash Forward are both Orca based, and one of them's way slower and has a lot fewer features, and the other one has a lot fewer features, but even more so. I can forgive Bamboo having their own slicer because Orca is actually based on Bamboo Slicer, but come on, can't we all just submit to Orca contribute to the project, and then have one slicer to rule them all. Is that so much to ask? Having seven reskinned versions of the same slicer with slightly different tweaks does not help the hobby, it doesn't enrich anybody's experience, and ultimately leads to a poorer end user experience. Now with that rant behind me, I appreciate Elegoo for leaving their machine open enough that I can simply use Orca Slicer. It lets me send prints wirelessly and monitor my machine from the slicer, and literally that's the only level of open that I require from a machine these days. Just give me the full feature set without having to download your slicer. Go ahead and comment below if this is a big deal to you, or if I'm just being an entitled millennial or something. But I think this is a silly thing that we all have to deal with. Now this is the part where we talk about PCBWay, this video's sponsor. PCBWay is your one-stop shop, of course, for anything manufacturing. If you're looking for CNC machining, 3D printing, whether it's FDM, MJF, other letters, they can probably get you taken care of. Going on their site is super simple. You click which process you'd like to use, you upload your file and choose the material that suits it best, and in a short number of days, you have something that was an idea and a file now sitting in your hand. What a crazy time to be alive. So if you like making stuff but you don't have the things that you need to make the stuff you like making, check the link in the description if you want more information and support the people that support this channel because they help us continue to do these things. Thanks PCBWay. Alright, now let's complain about this printer a little bit because there just have to be some weaknesses, right? The first and most prominent for me is the noise level. This printer's super loud. Wow, this thing's loud. Not quite as bad as the FL Sun T1. But the thing's much louder than most any machine that I have kicking around here. Now typically noise doesn't bother me all that much, but when I can be running an A1 Mini in the same room while I'm recording narration in a pinch, it shows me how quiet a printer could be. Now in the Centauri Carbon's defense, the A1 Mini doesn't have a chamber that it needs to keep cool. It doesn't have fumes that it needs to exhaust or anything like that. But that also kind of supports my point just a little bit more. If this printer's so loud because it's running all of those fans all the time, couldn't it be tuned to only run the necessary ones for whatever job is being printed? Like, I'm not sure on this machine if the exhaust fan and the chamber temperature regulation fan are the same fan, or if there's different fans. But if they are separate, you don't need to be running both of them when you're printing PLA. You can just regulate the chamber temperature a little bit. And if they are the same fan, I don't imagine it needs to be running so hard 
if we're talking about exhausting fumes versus temperature management and exhausting fumes. I don't know, maybe I'm off on this one, but on a machine so well thought out, I feel as though they could have come up with some level of strategy to keep it a little bit quieter. So here we are again, friends. Another printer that ships with some very cool specs and a nice package. And the spec page does look really good. Until we scroll down and find this little graphic here, multicolor. This machine can do it. But why is it talking about multicolor? This machine doesn't have a multicolor system yet, but like we've seen from other machines recently, it's still advertising it as a feature. This is kind of becoming more common, and I personally don't like judging a machine based on features that don't exist yet. Call me crazy. So I am hoping to get a hold of the multicolor box that Elegoo comes out with whenever they finish it and release it. But until then, this is just a super inconvenient miss for me. I've spoken about the fact that I'm more inclined to use my multicolor machines before I use the ones that don't have it. It's simply a workflow thing. It's much quicker to load a spool of filament into a machine that's got an AMS or an ACE, have it load and unload the filament, than it is for me to preheat a machine, unload the filament, load the filament, wait for the machine to grab it, so on and so on. And if you find yourself running more than like four machines at a time, the manual filament change time adds up super fast. Like if I'm trying to rip through some orders on my lunch break, for example, I don't want to wait the 60 seconds that it takes to swap the color over. I want to drop it in the multicolor robot and walk away. So since Elegoo's flaunting their multicolor system before it's even released, this is a big enough bummer for me that it's made the list. I can't wait for the multicolor box to hit the market the day after I drop this video. I am gonna look like such a fool. So the filament path on this machine is well documented to be an issue. It was enough of an issue for me when I was initially reviewing this machine that I decided to take it completely out of the cable chain and just run it over the top of the machine. And you know what? That's worked well enough that that's exactly where it is right now. But let me tell you, we're gearing up for another composite showdown and this printer is gonna be one of the stars of that show. As such, the top glass is gonna need to be on there to keep the chamber temperatures high. Now, I was originally thinking about designing a riser, something that wouldn't warp too easily with the high temperatures that would be creeping up there, but still something that's got a pliable inlet solution for the PTFE tube coming in. I don't know, I like designing things and I love making things for my printers and things that are functional for my daily life. But right now I just don't have the desire or the time to accomplish this project. So I figured I might print one of the solutions that's out there, that might solve the problem. I'm sure I could print it out of some high temp material so the warping wouldn't be a concern. But then as I thought about that even more, I don't really like that idea either. I don't like the idea of having a separate riser. This printer gets moved around my basement quite a bit, probably more than any other machine that I have around here. And knowing the way that I operate, I would absolutely pick up the printer, forget the riser is there, tip the thing over slightly too wrong, and shatter the top glass all over my floor. Full Uncle Jesse style. So ultimately I decided to stick with the stock setup. Your comments have told me that if you remove the clip in the cable chain that's closest to the tool head, it all but eliminates this issue. So that's what I'm gonna try moving forward. Stick around for the composite showdown and we'll see how that goes. And for our final complaint about this machine, I know this is something that I bring up quite a bit, but this machine's got the issue, so we're gonna talk about it. Active chamber temperature management. According to the product page, there's a chamber temperature management fan. It's responsible for managing the temperature inside the box. But from my experience, the times that I've left the lid on and had the front door closed, that chamber feels awfully hot when I open it again. And I can't say the clogs that I have had are specifically related to the high chamber temperatures, but I know others have reported a similar issue. And beyond clogs, there's even instances of things like banding occurring on the print because you opened the door at that layer, for example. And now in fairness, this can happen on any printer. If there's heat built up inside and you suddenly evacuate all that heat by opening the door, there's some thermodynamic things happening that aren't super conducive to print quality. But this machine says it has a chamber temperature regulator fan. So again, call me crazy, but I feel like that should probably manage the temperature of the chamber. Chamber temperature management isn't just evacuating the heat, I'm also throwing in the lack of chamber heater in this category. This is a printer that can print all the things. Why doesn't it have a chamber heater. The build volume isn't all that big, so maybe it doesn't explicitly need a chamber heater. Maybe the print bed's heat is enough to really heat soak that chamber. But I feel like if they're going this far, why don't they just add that feature that's becoming way more standard nowadays, even if it costs like 30 bucks more. Let me know what you think about this one. So overall, what do I think about this printer after using it for quite a while? Well, in short, 
it's good. Like I mentioned in my initial review, a printer costing only $300, boasting all of these incredible capabilities, allows me to overlook some of the shortcomings. The printer appears to have been made to a price point where possible. That's code for it's cheap. Also, side note, this stupid chamber light sucks so bad, but I couldn't make like a whole thing about it. It's just terrible. I also forgot to rate this printer, and that's something we do on this show, so. Centauri Carbon, I give it a solid 7.9. You can take that to the bank, baby. Anyway, that's what I think about this printer. If you like it, you should check the link below for more information. Also, you can check out our second channel. It's called You Like That. We're giving away printers and filament, so you should look into that if you want free printers or filament. Bye.